الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ومولانا محمد رسوله النبي الأمين المكين الحنين الكريم الرؤوف الرحيم أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تعالى في كلامه المجيد من يطع الرسول فقد أطاع الله وقال الله تعالى في مقام آخر قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحببكم الله صدق الله مولانا العظيم My dear respected viewers I welcome you to another episode of Who is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and I greet you with the Islamic greeting of peace Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Peace be with you and Allah's mercy and blessings In today's episode my dear viewers we are going to examine another reason why we need to study the life of the Prophet Why do we need to go through this journey of the seerah? Why do we need to travel through the life of the Prophet Why is it important from a religious perspective, from a religious aspect? Inshallah today this will be examined and in the next episode in fact also. The verse that I have quoted and I have uh, recited in front of you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions man yuti'ar rasul faqad Allah. whoever has obeyed the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it is as he has obeyed almighty Allah this verse of the holy Quran highlights one very important and significant teaching of Islam of our religion and that is that Islam as a religion, the teachings of, of it are derived from two primary sources. First is the Quran, the words of God. And secondly is the Hadith, is the Sunnah, is the life and the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa alihi wa sallam. Islam should not be understood by the actions of individuals, actions of groups, action of people. If you want to understand Islam, if you want to understand the religion of Islam, then remember its teachings are derived from two primary sources, the Word of God, the Quran, and the practical demonstration of the Quran, the life of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Sunnah and the, and the Seerah. The reason why we as Muslims need to, under, need to study the life of the Prophet ﷺ is because it is the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him, that will inform us about the teachings of Islam. The teachings of Islam, first of all, are in fact, no doubt, mentioned in the Holy Quran. But not everything that is part of the teaching of Islam is narrated in the Holy Quran. In fact, that what is related, that what is stated in the Qur'an itself without the practical demonstration of the Prophet, peace be upon him, is not applicable. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed the Qur'an, but that Qur'an cannot be followed, cannot be practiced without taking into consideration the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whenever he talks about obeying him, he talks about worshipping him, he talks about following him, he at the same time includes following Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whenever he mentioned and states his obedience, he at the same time states the obedience of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whenever he mentions his love, he at the same time states the love of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whenever he mentions his own disobedience, he also includes with it 
the disobedience of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. This is illustrated by these following verses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَن يُطِعِ الرَّسُولِ فَقَدْ أَطَعَ اللَّهِ In chapter number 3, verse number 32. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولِ فَخُزُوهُ فَخُزُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ فَانْتَهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in chapter number 59, verse number 7, whatever this messenger, this Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this Rasul gives you, take it. And whatever he stops you from, then abstain from it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states that whatever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says must be followed. And whatever he stops you from doing, you must stop doing it. Which means that his life, his will of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his commandment, the, the commandment of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is in fact the part of the teaching of Islam. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Quran, قُلْ أَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ Oh my beloved, tell these people to obey Allah والرسول and his messenger, yani you. The importance of the Prophet's life is that he and his life, in fact, is the source of Islamic teachings. As I said, some, th some injunctions, commandments, Allah has revealed in the Quran, but he has never revealed its details. As we see in the example of the prayer, that he has stated and revealed and commanded as many times in the Holy Quran by stating, وَأَقِيمُ salat and perform prayers. But he has not included details. He has not revealed details of the prayer. He did not inform us about the timings. Neither did Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inform us about the units of prayer. Neither did Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inform us about the positions of prayer. What, how to pray. What is qiyam, what is ruku, what is sujood, what is tashahud, what is qaada ula, qaada akhira, what is salam. He did not reveal these things. So just merely following the Qur'an is impossible. The Qur'an states and commands us to pray. Now how to pray? You need to go and study the life of the Prophet ﷺ. His life is a source, a primary source of Islamic teachings. Without his life, you will not be able to perform salat. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ said, Sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli. Pray as you see me praying. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals the commandments of Hajj. وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنِ اسْتَطَعَ عَلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا How to perform this Hajj? Again, the life of the Prophet wasallam is the second primary source of Islamic law. So look into the seerah of the Prophet. Look into the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And this is why he said, خُذُوا عَنِّي مَنَاسِكَكُمْ That learn from me, take from me the manasik, the, 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 the Hajj. Uh, rulings, regulations, and the manasik, the pillars of hajj. And this is why when, when we look at, for example, zakat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَآتُ zakat and, and pay zakat, pay charity. It is the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that is an important, significant source of Islamic teachings. Without it, even the Qur'an itself following it, it becomes impossible because we don't know how to calculate or, or what the percentage is of zakat charity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes, has revealed who we can pray charity to. But the details upon whom charity is farad, is compulsory, we find that in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And a very beautiful statement by Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, when he was once asked by someone about the prayer of safar, the prayer of of, of traveling, while you are in the state of traveling, how should you, in a qasr salat, how should you perform that prayer? Now in the Holy Quran, obviously, we do not find that. We do not find the details. But what we do find is exactly what the Sahabi said when he was asked, Abdullah bin Umar, in regards to the pr prayer of safar. And he said that, إِنَّ اللَّهَ, إن الله بَعَثَ إِلَيْنَا مُحَمَّدًا صلى الله عليه وسلم. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent among us the Prophet Muhammad, Peace be upon him. And we didn't know anything. We were not aware of any teachings. What, 
we saw him doing, we exactly do the same. What we see him practicing, we exactly practice the same. So the importance of the Prophet's life, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is, secondly, from a religious perspective, is that his life, his teachings, his, his seerah, is a source of Islamic teachings. Without it, Islamic teachings are incomplete. So he, he elaborates the commandments of Allah. He explains and practically demonstrates the commandments of Allah. And this is why the Prophet wasallam, he is given the authority of that he is, the, he does tashrih of sharia, which means he elaborates the sharia. He has an authority in which he explains the, the sharia, the commandments of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why also, when we look at any particular obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is always associated with the obedience of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَأَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ And obey Allah and the Messenger if you are a believer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has, when it comes to a source of guide, a source of Islamic teachings, his life, his seerah, has two different aspects, my dear viewers. The first aspect of his life being a source of Islamic teachings is the interpretative authority. The Prophet wasallam has an authority in which he does tashrih, he does interpret, he does the interpretation of, of the Qur'an, he does the interpretation of the commandments of Allah, of the injunctions of Allah. This is why his life is a guidance for us, is a source of Islamic teachings for us. And one of its aspects is because he is the one who has the interpretative authority. He is the one who interprets the Qur'an. He is the one who elaborates the Qur'an. And the second aspect of the Prophet ﷺ's seerah, the, the, the reason why his life is a guidance and why his life is a source of Islamic teachings is the legislative authority. This in Arabic is known as the ikhtiyar tashri'i. The Prophet ﷺ is not just the one who does tashri'i, interpretation, he at the same time is the one who does and who has the authority of legislation, tashri'ah, with an ayn at the end, tashri'ah. You need the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam does at the same time have the authority given by Allah to himself make legislation, himself introduce new legislation, legislation that the Qur'an did not introduce, that the Qur'an did, does not contain. This is why the Prophet Sallallahu life is for us important that we study it from a religious perspective because if you have just the Qur'an, Qur'an, Islamic teachings will not be complete. Without the Hadith, without the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Islamic teachings are incomplete. But once these, the Sunnah, the Seerah of the Prophet is included, now you have the two primary sources of Islamic law. When we look at the legislative authority of the Prophet ﷺ, dear viewers, when we look at the aspect that the Prophet ﷺ himself was able to introduce legislation, he was himself able to make legislation, then I would like to give you a few examples so you may understand this with evidence and proof from the life of the Prophet ﷺ. The legislative authority of the Prophet ﷺ is that the laws of Sharia are derived from the prophetic conduct. They are derived not just by his explanation of the Qur'an, but at the same time by his own conduct and by his own practical demonstration. For example, the law of catalysis. When someone has murdered a close family member from whom he can inherit, inherit a wealth, the law of catalysis is, that now since he has murdered that close person, that close relative from who, whom he can legally inherit, now he has no legal right to inherit from that person anymore. Similarly, this particular law is found not in the Qur'an, it is in the Sunnah, it is in the life of the Prophet ﷺ. The prohibition of wearing gold for men, the prohibition of wearing silk for men, is something that we do not find in the Qur'an. It is part of Islamic teachings, but we don't find it in the Qur'an. Where do we find it? In the second source, primary source of Islamic law and teachings, which is 
the sunnah, which is the seerah of the Prophet Similarly, my dear viewers, the ruling on a person who has broken his fast, who was in the state of fasting, but while he was fasted, he broke his fast. What is the ruling on that? The Quran does not state, does not reveal, does not contain the ruling on breaking the fast. We find that in the life of the Prophet ﷺ. The kafara, the penalty of breaking a fast while you are fasting intentionally is something we find in the life of the Prophet ﷺ. When practically someone, one of the Sahaba, did break his fast intentionally and came to the Prophet ﷺ and questioned and asked him, Ya Rasulullah ﷺ, now tell me what should I do? I have broken my fast intentionally. And now I would like to know what I should do in response. So my dear viewers, all these examples that I have given, these rules, these legislation, we do not find them in the Quran. We find them, however, in the seerah, in the biography of the Prophet ﷺ. So in order to completely understand Islam, in order to completely know about the deen, the religion of Islam, one must study the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ. It is the second source of Islamic law. So this is why we must study the life of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. Inshallah, in the next episode, we will discuss another reason from a religious perspective why we need to study the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Until the next episode, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.